Welcome to Kerberos Explained. Hi, my name is Barry and I have been in IT for over 17 years. I have spent the last month deep diving into the Kerberos protocol, researching in detail how the protocol works. Kerberos is by no means an easy subject to understand, so I've tried to develop this video to be an informative, hopefully entertaining and very stimulating. I hope you enjoy. I believe the best place to start is by examining the terminology of some key elements of Kerberos. A Kerberos realm is a domain in which the Kerberos service has the authority to authenticate a user or service. You can have multiple realms and you can also interconnect them. On the other hand, a Kerberos principle is a unique identity in which the Kerberos service can assign tickets to within a realm. Types of valid principles include users, normal users or administrators, for example, and services such as file servers, databases, and printer servers. The key distribution center is at the heart of the realm. Its job is to authenticate principles within a Kerberos realm and to facilitate the connection between users and servers upon the network. This is achieved without any user having to share their credentials such as passwords over a network, which may be unsecure. If you've had any experience with domain controllers, this may seem familiar to you. The Kerberos Key Distribution Center, KDC, is integrated with other Windows security service services that run on the domain controller. It is a fundamental part of Windows domain services. Let's look at a high level view of the Key Distribution Center or KDC. The KDC is basically made up of two server services, the authentication server and the ticket granting server. In a Windows environment, you should think of them more like services than servers as a single domain controller can act as a KDC. Simply put, the authentication server's job is to authenticate a user in a domain and if all the user's details provided are correct, then the user gets a ticket called a ticket granting ticket. This happens when the user initially logs into the client on the network and the ticket provides the client digital proof that I am an authenticated user. This is an automatic process and the user may never need the ticket. It's just there ready if the user wants to access a service on the network. So for example, I've got a work laptop. I go to log in. My laptop contacts the authentication server sitting on the KDC. The authentication server proves that I am who I say I am and then sends me or sends my laptop a ticket granting ticket, giving me digital proof that I am an authenticated user of the domain. The second server service is the ticket granting server. This is the server which is contacted when the user tries to access a service on the network. The client sends its proof that it has been authenticated and the name of the service on the network it wants to use. The ticket granting server then simply provides a new ticket called a service ticket, which again is sent to the user and then forwarded onto the server the user wants to access. So for example, I'm an authenticated user on a domain. I want to access a folder on a file server. My client sends the digital proof that I have been authenticated and also sends the name of the resource I'm trying to access, i.e. the file server. The ticket granting server checks all my information and sends me back a ticket I can then present to the file server to get the file. This is the basics of how Kerberos works. The next part of the video goes into further detail and shows the complete authentication from a low level. Before we jump into the low level example of Kerberos, I would like to make sure you understand the difference between hashes and session keys and how they will be used by Kerberos to encrypt messages during different stages of the Kerberos authentication. Kerberos never sends a password over the network. Instead, it generates a hash of the password and then uses this to encrypt the data that's sent. Seeing that the KDC domain controller knows the user's password, and so does the client, they can encrypt messages between one another in this manner. However, this is not the best way to communicate as even though the message is encrypted, 
would be hackers maybe may still be able to backwards engineer the password for an offline dictionary attack. One better way of sending messages across a network is to use session keys, which are generated on the fly by the KDC or domain controller. When a client first sends a message to the KDC during the authentication stage, hashes are used, but any future communication will use a session key. The benefits of session keys is that they are randomly generated and they only last a certain amount of time, which means if they get compromised, then the user's credentials remain valid. So just to recap, Password hashes are used by the client and KDC, but any future communication is done by session keys. Let's jump into the example. Let's look at the complete authentication stage of Kerberos. We'll bring in a client and a Windows domain controller that has the Kerberos authentication service running upon it. We're going to assume that a user has just logged in with their credentials on the client PC. As the user's password is known by the domain controller as well as the client, they both can encrypt and decrypt messages using the hash of the password as the key. As the user has just logged on, the client they are using automatically creates a message to send to the authentication server service. The ticket contains the principal's name, user computer ID, the nonce, which is a semi-random number, which is also used to stop replay attacks, and a timestamp which is encrypted using the hash of the user's credentials. The ticket is then sent to the authentication server, and the authentication server uses the user's hash and tries to decrypt the timestamp. If the timestamp cannot be decrypted, then the authentication server sends an error message back to the client. If the authentication server is able to decrypt the message, then it creates a unique KDC session key and then uses its own hash of the KDC password to create a ticket granting ticket. I would suggest you look at the ticket granting ticket as two individual messages to the client. The first part of the ticket is encrypted using the user's hash, whereas the second part of the ticket, the TGT, is encrypted using the KDC's hash. The first message contains a unique session key for both the client and the server to use for any future communication. The second part of the ticket is very interesting as it cannot be read by the client. You may ask why this is being sent to the client. Well this bit of the ticket is what's sent in future stages of the Kerberos protocol. It's not for the client to read, it's for the client to forward on which we'll show in the next stage. Before we go any further, I just wanted to quickly go over what the Kerberos tray is. When a ticket is given to the client, it is stored in an area of computer memory called the Kerberos tray. This is volatile memory, which means that if the computer restarts or it shuts down, all tickets will be lost and the client will have to perform a reauthorization with the KDC. Having a dedicated area for Kerberos tickets means that no ticket will ever be stored in the computer's hard drive. Another interesting fact is that the Kerberos tickets have a default lifespan of 600 minutes or 10 hours at least in a Windows environment. Now we are going to look at the ticket granting server side of the Kerberos protocol. We'll bring back the client and user, which already has been authenticated by the authentication server service, and we'll also bring back the domain controller as before, which is running the ticket granting server service. In the authentication stage, the client was given both a ticket granting ticket, currently stored in the Kerberos tray, and a session key to communicate with the KDC. This is what is going to be used to encrypt the messages between the client and KDC. As the client wants to access a service on the network, it sends a message to the ticket granting server in clear text containing the service principal name of the file server. It's, it's named basically. It also sends the principal details, i.e. the username and the current timestamp encrypted with the session key. 
The third thing it sends is the TGT ticket, which is removed from the Kerberos tray. And if you remember, it's encrypted using the KDC's credentials. When the KDC gets the message, it uses the session key to decrypt the user's credentials along with the timestamp. If the KDC cannot decrypt the message, then it sends an error back message back to the client. If it can decrypt the message, it will try and decrypt the TGT part of the message using the KDC's hash. The ticket granting server service looks up the name of the file server the client wants to access. It knows at least or can work out the hash of the file server's account. On top of this, the KDC will also create a session key for the client to communicate securely to the file server, which can be demonstrated in the next section of this video. The ticket granting server will make a service ticket. Again, I would suggest to you to look at this as individual messages, although they are sent as one. The first section contains the new session key the user or client will use to communicate to the file server. This is encrypted using the KDC's session key, which the client can decrypt. The second part of the ticket is the service ticket. Again, this is not meant for the user or computer to read. It is meant to be used by the client to forward onto the file server. It too contains the key, which will be used by the file server to communicate with the client. This seems a bit confusing, but once the service ticket is forwarded to the file server and the client opens the part of the message with the file server session key, both the client and the file server will have the same key to encrypt and decrypt message between them. Now we are going to look at the final stage of this Kerberos transaction, which is the client to file server communication. The client has already been through the authentication stage and has already received a service ticket from the KDC to communicate with the file server. The client has the session key to communicate with the file server, but the file server only has its hash. What happens is, is that the client constructs a new message. The client adds the service ticket, which is encrypted with the file server's hash, along with additional client information and a timestamp, which is encrypted with the file server's session key. The message is sent to the file server, and the file server uses its hash to decrypt the service ticket and obtain the session key. The session key then allows the client to unencrypt the rest of the message. Now, because the message is encrypted and the client is confirmed to be who they say they are, a communication between the file server and client can continue and the user finally gets access to his or her folder. As I said at the start of this video, Kerberos is quite hard to wrap your head around. I am hoping that this video has made it easier for you to understand how Kerberos works at a high and low level without bombarding you with information. I always believe a picture paints a thousand words, so I really truly hope that presenting this video in this manner can help people like me who learn more graphically. As always, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Although this video has taken a great deal of work and research, I welcome any comments, good or bad, on this video, as I just want to be better as a presenter. If it helped you, or if you just enjoyed the animation parts at least, I would love a like. I have also included a link to the RFC standard for Kerberos, however I think you may need a strong copy to stay awake reading it, but I've included it anyway. Again, thanks for watching.